what it's testing is are these things all going in the same direction? Okay. Let's go back to the data that we used for the t-test, the two-sample t-test and the match pairs t-test. Staying with that same data since we're familiar with the sets. We've got 25 readings. Okay. And we've already calculated for the match pairs t-test that first one is 24 bigger than the second one, the second, okay, the second items are even, etc. And what we do for the sign test is I just look at these items here. So go back to this, and what I'm going to count is how many zeros do I have. And so if I go through the data, I've got one there, one there. I put a line next to it. Okay, there's another one down there. I find five zeros. Okay? And I put that... Let's go down to the bottom of the thing, okay. To do the sign test, we're doing the same hypothesis we were doing for the others. How many zeros do I have? I have five zeros. Then I have how many minuses and how many pluses. There were 25 items all together and I count and I had five minuses and 15 pluses and five zeros, okay? And so what we're going to do now is figure up is that enough of a difference so that these things are considered different? Okay. What the heck do I mean by that? Well, think of it this way. We're saying is, is the first group of data the same as the other? If they were perfectly the same, we'd have 25 zeros. Okay. Now, if they really are the same and they're not equal to zero, then the pluses or minuses should be randomly distributed. In other words, I've got 20 other numbers that are not zero. They should be divided up roughly 10, 10. Is 5 and 15 enough of a difference to throw it out? Now, what I'm going to assume by this is that uh, it doesn't make any difference which that, okay? So if it's a 50-50 chance of whether you're a plus or a minus, I can go to my binomial distribution. I gotta go find the page here, yeah, let's see. Go to my binomial distribution and I go with, how many items do I have? I have 20, right? N is 20 and the, the p-value is 0.50. Okay. Let's see if I can fit this in here. Okay. This is taken out of the book. Okay. So if you go to your binomial table near the back of the book, the uh, colored section, the tab, it's tabbed up in the other corner. We go to the binomial table. Okay. If you go across the top to where the probability is 0.50. Okay. Way over to the left, there are 20 items. Here, I wrote this down to the right. This is the probability that none of them. What are we talking about here? Think of flipping a coin that has a probability of 0.50. What's the probability I toss a coin 20 times and get no heads? Zero, zero, zero. Does that mean it can't happen? It means it's less than 1 in 10,000. Okay, this is the probability I get exactly one head. This is the probability I get two heads three heads, four heads, five heads, etc., all the way down. Now, since this is a 50-50 table, notice that the table is symmetric. 10 is the highest number. 9 and 11 have the same. 8 and 12 have the same. Okay? So if I move this up a little bit, that's what happens when you're a klutz. Okay. The probability of getting 20 heads is 0, 19 heads is 0, 18 heads is 0, 2, the same as getting 2, okay, etc. That's what my table is showing me. Now, let's go back up to the top of the table. All right. If you remember in my other problem that I just came from, let's put that up. I had five zeros, 
Okay, I take those out. Now I get 20 items. This is where my 20 comes from. I got five minuses and 15 pluses. So what I want to do is calculate what is the probability that I got five or less minuses and 15 or more pluses, okay? And so what do I do? I take the probability of getting zero, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to add those together. If I take that out, look at this. Zero to five is right there. Let's add these up. That's 3, 9, 17. Carry to 1 gives me 10. Carry to 1 is 2. I get 0, 2, 0, 7. Okay? For the bottom. Now, if we remember that, let's go back over. O two O seven. 2, 0, 7. Now, problem is that I need the other part of the table, right? And remember, it was identical, so I can go add up 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, but I know they're the same as 0 to 5, so it's going to be 0207, so I just double that number, and I get 0414. That is my p-value, or the probability that these things are really the same if I've got 15 and 5 instead of 10 and 10. Okay? I'm comparing, I'm testing against at 95% so I could have a 5% error. What I'm looking at, this is my p-value. Is it smaller than 0 0.05? If it is, these are different. If it's bigger than 0 0.05, these are the same. And so I just look at that and then I would conclude, I would take and conclude on that that what? I would, they're different, right? Because this is smaller than, let's slide this over, okay? 0414 is smaller than 05. Therefore, I reject the null hypothesis. I accept the alternate hypothesis. And I conclude that the results are significantly different, okay? If instead of 15 and 5, I had uh, 14 and 6, let's go back and look at the table quickly and see what would happen, right? Six is right there. If I add that in, okay, I've got what? Three, nine, 17, carry to one. That's 10, 17, carry to one. That's five, oh, five, seven, seven. Double that and I've got what? Over 11%, about 11 and a half percent. That is over 5%. So if I had 14 and six, that would tell me that there's no significant difference. But 15 and 5 is just far enough to push me over the edge. Okay? And so this is different than the t-test in that we're doing it kind of backwards. We're calculating the p-value, and we're looking at the binomial table to get the probability that I have that many numbers. So I always take my smallest number. I got five minuses. So I go back and I calculate from zero to five, add them up, and double that. That'll give me the 15 to 20, and compare that against 5%. If that number, that total, is less than 5%, then I conclude that these are different. If it's bigger than 5%, then I conclude they're the same. And this is called the sign test because I'm just counting up the signs. Thank you.